I want to talk about sets of real numbers and introduce interval notation. Let's consider the set of real numbers between 0 and 5, including 0 and 5. How would we graph this set? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is put a variable on the number line. I'm just going to use x. To indicate that I want to include my endpoints 0 and 5, I'm going to put a filled-in circle at 0 and a filled-in circle at 5. Then to indicate that I want all real numbers between 0 and 5, I'm going to shade everything on the number line between 0 and 5. This type of set of real numbers is called an interval of real numbers. Intervals of real numbers may be described in four ways. Verbally, graphically, using set builder notation, and using interval notation. We looked at our verbal description, the set of real numbers between 0 and 5, including 0 and 5. We looked at a graph. Well, let's look at the set builder notation and the interval notation. For the set builder notation, we use these curly brackets. And I'm going to use the variable I used on my number line, x. x such that, this bar means such that. 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 5. This is telling me the set of all x, where x is between 0 and 5, including 0 and 5. What does the interval notation look like? In interval notation, we always put our smallest number to the left of the interval and our largest number to the right of the interval. To indicate we want to include the endpoints, we use a square bracket. So I start with a square bracket, 0 is my left-hand endpoint, then I use a comma, 5 is my right-hand endpoint, and I close this off with a square bracket. This also shows us the set of real numbers between 0 and 5, including 0 and 5. This is what we call interval notation. Let's consider the interval given to us in set builder notation, x, such that 0 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 5. This is the set of real numbers between 0 and 5, excluding 0 and including 5. How would I graph this? Well, I'm going to start by putting an x on the number line. I want to exclude 0, so I'm going to put an open circle at 0 but I'm including 5, so I'm going to have a filled in circle at 5. And then I want all of the real numbers in between, so I'm going to shade the number line in between. What does my interval notation look like? In interval notation, if we want to exclude an endpoint, we use round parentheses rather than square brackets. So I start this off with a left parenthesis, 0, which is not included, comma, my largest number in my set is 5, which is included, so I close this off with a square bracket. The parentheses tell us 0 is not included. The square bracket tells us 5 is included. Now let's consider the interval x such that 0 is less than x, which is less than 5. This time we're looking at the set of real numbers between 0 and 5, excluding both 0 and 5. To graph this, I'm going to start by putting x on the number line. And this time I need an open circle at 0 and an open circle at 5, because neither of my endpoints are included. But I want all of the real numbers between this, so I shade everything on the number line between 0 and 5. What does the interval notation look like? Well, remember in interval notation we use parentheses to indicate that the endpoints are not included. So we consider 0 our left-hand endpoint, even though it's not included. Our parentheses show us not to include 0, comma, and 5 being our right-hand endpoint, although it is also not included. So we close this off with parentheses. Here's our interval notation that describes this set. Now let's consider the interval x such that x is greater than or equal to 0. This is the set of non-negative real numbers. To graph this, I'm going to start by putting an x on my number line. The non-negative numbers start with 0. 0 is not a negative number. 
zeros included, we can also see that in our set builder notation because we have x is greater than or equal to zero. So I want a filled in circle at zero. Then I want everything to the right. Everything positive. So I shade to the right on my number line. And I put an arrow at the end to indicate that this set goes on forever. Well, what about our interval notation? How do we indicate that a set has no largest element? We have the symbol infinity. So in interval notation, we start with a left-hand endpoint, which in this case is zero. Zero is included, so I use a square bracket. Comma, I don't have a right-hand endpoint. I use the symbol infinity to indicate this set goes on forever. Since infinity is not a number in this interval, infinity is not included. We use the round parenthesis with infinity. Important things to remember, the in symbol infinity does not represent a real number. The symbol infinity is not a point on the number line. For this reason, we always use parentheses in interval notation with the symbol infinity. Now let's consider the interval x such that x is greater than zero. This time we have the set of positive real numbers. It's important to note that positive and non-negative do not mean the same thing. The difference here is we don't include zero. Zero is not positive. Zero is a part of the set of non-negative real numbers, but zero is not part of the set of positive real numbers. We also see that in our set builder notation because x is strictly greater than zero. Well, how do we graph this? Again, I'll start by putting x on my number line. I don't want to include zero, but zero is my left-hand endpoint, so I use an open circle at zero. And I want all of the positive numbers, so I shade to the right on the number line and end with an arrow to indicate that this set goes on forever. Well, what about the interval notation? Our left-hand endpoint is zero. It's not included. To indicate an endpoint is not included, we use a parenthesis in interval notation. So we start with a left parenthesis, zero. And again, to indicate that there is no largest number in the set, we use the symbol infinity, which always takes parentheses. Infinity is not an element of the set. Infinity is just a symbol to tell us that this set of real numbers goes on forever. Now let's consider the interval x such that x is less than 10. This is the set of real numbers less than 10. To graph this, I'll start by putting an x on the number line. 10 is now my right-hand endpoint. 10 is not included, so I use an open circle at 10. Then I want everything less than 10, so I need to shade to the left on this number line. And I'll end with an arrow. So let's think about our interval notation. How do we indicate that a set has no smallest element? Well, here we use the symbols negative infinity. So in interval notation, we don't have a smallest real number. We don't have a left-hand endpoint. We start with parentheses and use the symbols negative infinity to indicate there is no left-hand endpoint. There is no smallest number in the set. And our right-hand endpoint is 10. 10 is not included, so we use parentheses to close this off. Remember, the symbol's negative infinity does not represent a real number. The symbol negative infinity is not a point on the number line. Once again, this is why we use parentheses in interval notation. Remember, we always use parentheses with the symbol negative infinity. Now let's consider the set of all real numbers. How are we going to graph this? Well, we want everything on the number line. So I'm going to start with my variable x, and then I'm just going to shade the entire number line with arrows at both sides to indicate that our set goes on forever in both directions. What would this look like in set builder notation? Well, we have the set of all x 
such that x is a real number. This is the symbol with set builder notation that we use for real numbers. In textbooks you often see a boldface r. What would this look like in interval notation? Well, we have no left or right hand endpoints. We need to use the symbols negative infinity and infinity. Remember, negative infinity and infinity always take parentheses in interval notation. So we have the interval from negative infinity to infinity with parentheses at both sides. Let's look at a quick summary of interval notation. We have open intervals, such as the open interval from A to B, which means the endpoints A and B are not included. Everything in between is. In set builder notation, that's the set of all x such that A is less than x, which is less than B. We have closed intervals, such as the closed interval from A to B, which means both endpoints A and B are included, as well as all the real numbers in between. In set builder notation, this is the set of all x such that A is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to B. We also have half open intervals. We could have the interval from A to B where A is included and B is not. Notice we have a square bracket to show A is included, but a parenthesis to show that B is not. In set builder notation, this is the set of all x such that A is less than or equal to x, which is less than B. Or we could have the interval from A to B where A is not included, but B is. So we start with a parenthesis A comma B, and then the square bracket to show that B is included. In set builder notation, this is the set of all x such that a is less than x, which is less than or equal to b. Remember that the symbols negative infinity and infinity are only used with parentheses, never square brackets. These are not real numbers, so they're never going to be the endpoints of an interval. We use parentheses every time we see negative infinity and infinity in interval notation.